Daniel, you want? We should say like a Benton or something, right? Should we? Yeah. 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 Okay. Moment of silence or something. There you go. Pressure. <laughs> okay. Uh, we talked a lot about comparing 2021 and 2022, the preparation ahead of the opener. Is Was this first fall camp practice any different than last year's <laughs> just because of all the time you've been able to have comparatively to 2021? Uh, yeah, there's so many things that are different uh, that are for the, for the better. I mean, obviously, as we've said many times, if you know the players know coaches, know what to expect. I mean, we still had you know a fair amount of new guys going through their first practice, so there's that little uncertainty and wandering of you know where where am I going next or adapting to the pace and things like that. But all in all, uh, um, the amount that was put in, the communication, uh, yeah, there's some sloppy moments, but all in all, uh, you know, everyone's understanding and. Um, Definitely in a in a good spot compared to you know last year what you can go two to three weeks plus that we're still evaluating and trying to figure things out now you know we have an idea now it's more into it's still evaluating but development at the same time so it's a good feeling that way. That you didn't have to do this time around that you had to do last year. <laughs> Boy, there's probably a few of those, but they're probably some of the more some just about you know. You know where we're going, how we're doing, and and, and that. I, I but that's just a carryover for anything of year one. I think of uh, you know through even our spring ball stuff of locality and what we mean by certain words and terms, even in practice as we go. Uh, um, you know how we expect to finish and attention to detail and all that kind of stuff. You know we you know I've Jeremy Robinson's a young man who just to me continues to to. Get better, but he, the thing that pressed me because he's kind of an epitome one, and I'm, I don't mean to exclude other people, but he's got such a motor right now that we need at that defensive end spot. And there's one play today; two other guys fell down, and as he's running, and he already got past the quarterback, and he knew it's time to go now chase the ball. He's, he's kind of young. The other guys get up, get up, and those guys, those guys bounced and went. That to me, is a huge difference of where we're at. Players leading players, but then, then the way they're responding and doing it yeah. um, to me is very impressive. Housekeeping is there anyone who's limited or maybe not expected to participate much during fall camp, just injury wise? Jason Gilliam will be the one right now, will not go through fall camp. Um, right now, other than that, um, you know, we're, we're in decent shape. Lance, we talked a little bit about. Jalen and the entire uh, Big 12 media days and his mm -hmm. role and responsibilities here. Um, you joked even then, you know, do we even have to name him the starter? But do you, is that basically the plan now? Definitely. <laughs> We're going to come back to that. Again, there's, uh, there's everybody's going to compete. Yeah. Do I expect Jalen to start game one? Uh, yeah, I would. But my, but you know, I, I thought Jason Bean had a good day today, and I and I know there's some throws right off the bat. Jalen wish he had back today, so, um, you know. So if you want to type right now, Leipold expects uh, Daniels to be the starter. Go ahead and type it, okay? And uh, but uh, I uh, again, um, you know, uh, uh, that's probably the best way I'll answer it at this time. <laughs> Beyond those guys, um, we know obviously what Jason can do. You've got two younger guys with, mm -hmm. with Ben and Ethan too. Um, yep. what, what are their responsibilities and roles in camp, and how can they help the other two guys get ready? Get better every day, learn the offense, help point out things. Uh, you know, again, all the development that Jim does in the meeting room uh, day by day. Um, it, he, you know, they continue to develop. Uh, Jordan Preston's here as well. Uh, all those guys have important roles for us to develop as a team. Um, you know, and we'll see kind of how the – you know, between Ben and uh, Ethan, you know, really, I guess will be the, the other battle there that we kind of, I say battle, competition, we'll continue to see, and you, you want to put yourself in a good position. Kind of back to the other question before, you look at last year, you know, we had Jalen and Jason, Miles and Miles, and, and, and you know, you're trying to, you, you've had guys that have played in games, and but yet, 
nobody ever really took the job. So you're trying to, we're trying to split reps four ways plus, you know, you're, you're not getting a lot done, I, I think, but our practice format allows us to do some things, but we'll get to the point where, you know, those other guys are going to be getting most of the work. You told the story there about Jeremy. Um, that position group, the defensive line, is, is probably your oldest and most experienced and one you didn't really have to address much in the past eight months. What do you like about that rotation and that group and, and those guys? Well, um, I, I, I want to make sure I'm clear. The defensive tackle position is yeah, the sure. one that was. Yeah. The defensive end position has been addressed. So I want to make sure that, that, that we're there. Lonnie, Lonnie Phelps has been brought in. Davian Westmoreland has been brought in. Dean Miller has been brought in. So two guys just had their first practice. Um, but uh, Hayden Hatcher's back off injury. Marion Alexander at defensive end as far as uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Lee. I, Malcolm Lee's had a really good summer and uh, his most consistent summer and things and really, really love to see him. And I think he's on a right track to uh, um, carry that in to, to August and September. Um, so I, I think, you know, in an area, if we're going to, we got to be better stopping the run. Okay, that's no secret. There's one reason. Uh, we did what we did staffing-wise, splitting and putting two coaches there so we can put more eyes on it, a lot of different things. So, uh, um, and I think Jeremy's going to be one of those key guys in, uh, when it comes to pass rush situations as well. I do like uh, the experience and maturity of the interior guys and, and some of the adjustments we've made in philosophy. And, uh, um, y you know, that I think will help us as well. How many key tackles? You want to get on the field of the game? How do you want to divide those snaps? Well, it, we you too know, far from that? I don't know. I've been I've, I've been a head coach now. This is like year sixteen, and I've had I don't know how many defensive line coaches, and they all want to take like everyone to every game, and it's like and they want to. It's a great rotating position. I, how many do I want to? As many that are ready and are ready to go, but I can, you know, we could play six or seven. You know, when uh, you, you know you got. Sam and Caleb, you got two young guys and Tommy Dunn and DJ. Um, you know, Caleb Taylor, Taylor's had a had a really good summer. He's holding his weight a lot better than he did a year ago. I think he's pushing 300. And I think there were times last year he was playing, I don't even know if he's under 260 some games. Um, and then Eddie Wilson and Ron McGee. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of pieces there. And again, one of the things is having consistent play but also having depth that you're fresh in, in, especially in the fourth quarter. I think I think Jim Panagos will, you know, find the solid rotation there for us. And I f forgot Keenan Caldwell in there as well. That's why I always, that's why I never should name all the guys. Brian, I, you'll always forget one and don't want to hurt anyone there because, so it's going to be competitive. And when we get through those things, and, and, and I think the defensive line's a great example, is that, uh, you know, they're going to fight for reps on, uh, you know, when you get in season Tuesday, Wednesday, I better be locked in and practice well. How would you rate the excitement of the first day? You know, it, oh, I'm sorry. What you got done today? I think we got a lot accomplished and done. Excitement, I, I think there's also, um, there was excitement, there's a buzz. It, you know, you can always tell like certain times when we get back together when they're around each other. I, I thought that was a lot yesterday. I think this group has a, has a determination about them, that, that how they want to approach things and, and, and change really the direction of this program. At the same time, I think there's uh, always that um, anxiety, I don't want to say anxious, a um, little nervousness. Um, probably the way I felt a year ago, I didn't have that as much this time around because we know what we have with our players. And I, I think it's, um, you know, we're starting earlier than ever. The NCAA let us start a few more days earlier, but then give us more practices. And I think it's all in all, that's a good move because we get more, they, they'll get more days off in between that hopefully will continue to keep us healthy as we move forward. But this group's excited. I, I think uh, they, you know, you do all this stuff from January through the end of July, you know, and Coach Gildersleeve, you know, as he told them, as he finished up going through some of the stuff from the summer with them and the great results that, that they, they improved on, he said, uh, nobody came here to play weightlifting, okay? And you came here to play football, now it's time to go do it. You mentioned Gildersleeve right there. I guess, how do you feel like everyone's doing in terms of the weight they put on? And you mentioned Caleb Taylor. Just overall, how do you 
you know, uh, Matt went through a bunch of stuff at the players yesterday of where we were average weight last year, you know, and kind of they compared some things in the Big 12 where we were at just a, in program wise of how much, um, you know, quite honestly, undersized we were a year ago and the gains we've started to make at every position. Uh, it's been great. He went through really all our testing factors and, and you know, as a team, there's, there's things at certain benchmarks that we've doubled of where we were a year ago. So um, extremely, extremely pleased with, with that uh, and the job Matt and his strength, strength staff uh, do for us. And, uh, you know, again, it, now, now we got to go out and make it work. I'm curious, too, for you, with so many newcomers and junior college transfers, transfers, what do you look for in these first few days before kind of the full pads come on? And how do you kind of evaluate? Uh, just, uh, again, you're watching basic, you know, how they move around and do some things, how they're adapting to what we're doing. But, you know, you can't, you know, some guy, everybody's coming from a different starting point. Some aspects, you know, a lot of them you don't know, you know, whether it be terminology or length of the day or meeting style and you know so you try not to come with too many prejudgments or early judgments because guys are going to progress at different different times some some guys may be headed to red shirting okay but still have the red shirt rule that you can play four games well guys keep developing all the way through they they, they have a chance to help you even in november and so don't want to don't want to get too far ahead of there i, I Again, all the new guys have got great attitudes. They've worked hard. And uh, I, I also think on both sides of it, they see, I say both sides, meaning returners and them, that's going to be competitive. And, and that's what we've been striving for. Hey, Lance, can Good you job. talk a little bit about just special teams, what your thoughts are heading into camp with the guys and, and maybe the return game? In, in special team, you know, right now we're going to, you know, that's probably, you know, losing Kwame Lasser, especially in punt return, has opened up some opportunities. We're going to have to find somebody who's going to make great decisions and, uh, you know, of course, secure the football. We, you know, I, you know, made change special teams coordinator as well, kind of changed again in some format there where we're not going to have one coach coaching everything. We're, we're having it broken down with lead coaches in a format that uh, a lot of us are a little more comfortable with. And I, th I think that's going to help us in the, in the coaching aspect and attention to detail with some of that. And uh, we've got to be better there. We've got to find ways to, uh, you know, get some, get some hidden yardage. Um, what I mean by that, by, you know, reducing returns on the opponent, creating a first down on our own end, okay? And... Uh, you know, I, 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 love, I really like our specialists. I should say I love our specialists. You know, that's just, I just think they compete, they're consistent, they don't get flustered. Um, but at the same time, there's certain times of the year where we, we kind of hit a lull last year and we got to, again, be able to, to respond to adversity as we go through it. We're going to talk to Sam in a second here. As he was on a preseason watch list for the top community servant in college football, it's mm -hmm. just what did it mean to you to see him on that list, to see all his work you know, in the community recognized in that way? Well, I, I think we talked last year, those of you that were in the room, about you know, his unselfishness and, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, again, it's kind of he and Jalen Daniel, you know, Jalen, you know, deciding to give up the red shirt and Sam, after being hurt, deciding to red shirt, says a lot about their commitment um, to KU football, to their teammates, um, really to the community as a whole. But and, and Sam has always been about that. He's he's a selfless, uh, giving person, and wants to be. And you know when those things come out, uh, you're really happy that they get that notice uh, nationally that they deserve. Hey coach, with the depth you guys have at running back and then a couple quarterbacks who can run the football as well, do you anticipate this could be a run-heavy offense, or do you kind of have to be intentional about making sure that it doesn't get too run-heavy, or how do you find that balance when you have so many guys that can carry the football? That's a great question. Um, you know, again, we're, we're never – we've always strived to be as multiple as we can. I think we've talked about that, at, you know, uh, um, and the evidence of that was, I think, at our last stop, we led the conference in passing one year, led the, led the conference in rushing the next. We'll do what it's going to take to win football games, try to be as diverse and as multiple as we can. We know we want to be able to be explosive in the passing game and find some ways to be a little more consistent there. And, you know, and again, that starts with, uh, you know, our, our consistency and accuracy uh, along the way that we've been working on. And, uh, but uh, to your, you know, 
you know, I, I think as at least as we start on paper, the running back room is the most, um, probably the deepest of any room. I, um, with guys that have played um, Power Five football, and uh, that's exciting. But um, we've got to find ways to, you know, uh, again get guys on the field, do different things, and find a way to move the football. And right now, uh, everything goes. You know, we're we're not going to hold anything back. And I think uh, Andy and Jim Zabrowski and myself, we've been together long enough to be on the same page that we're going to do whatever it takes and be as multiple as we can, not to be predictable but also get the ball in our playmaker's hands. And you talked last year about kind of the importance of keeping talent in the state of Kansas, in Kansas, and, and getting them to come to Lawrence. Can you just speak on kind of how that has progressed and how you guys are taking steps to, to try and do that here at yeah. KU? You know, again, we're, it continues through our high school relations, our camps, our, our follow through. Uh, but uh, much like turning this program around, so that, that's not going to be a light switch fix either. OK, and, and I think uh, as we continue to show our consistency on just how we go about our day to day operation and uh, running this program. Um, and I, I think as as we deal with, uh, you know, young male football players in the state of Kansas, I think they're going to see it and, hope, and hopefully appreciate it. Um, we know that there's fine talent here and uh, we're continuing to do everything we can to be able to to keep them right here in Kansas. Lance, where do you stand in identifying your, your backup lineman, your swing tackle, your backup, those kind of guys, the, the next three and beyond that? The next three, well, we've had one practice. I mean, it's, yeah, I, know. I, I mean, you, you know, well, we got, look yeah, we're looking, you know, again, I, in fact, it was interesting. I was, I was listening to, uh, you know, I was listening to Chip Kelly at UCLA talking about things and personnel and his offense, and I thought it was really good, and it, and it pertains to us. And I, I, so I'm going to kind of repeat what he says. We're, we're going to try to find linemen six, seven, eight, and then hopefully nine and ten as well, wherever they're coming from. Right now after day one, we got to get in pads. I think it would be a great question in maybe ten days or so, and, and I'll have a better answer for you because some guys are just getting in there. we we got a couple guys, Jay Deron and uh, Dominic Pooney. It's their first day, okay? And now Drave's playing some center, but he started at right tackle at Buffalo all last year. But we had used him some at center in the spring prior, prior to, to kind of dual train him. He's a very versatile guy. So is he going to play some tackle? He very well could. I think, you know, Pooney's going to be in it as well. But he's, you know, he's just in his first day, and he just showed up about a month ago. So to, to see where all those guys are at, uh, D.K. Stearns is going to be another guy that's that's had a good summer. Uh, Nolan, you know, after going through spring, so we're going to wait and see on that. But I I don't want to dismiss the question because we do have to we have to solidify our our, our second offensive line. And and again, I'm, to keep in mind, a year ago, a lot of the second string offensive line were seniors, Joey Gilbertson and Adagio. Um, and then uh, Colin Grunhardt didn't come back. And, you know, there, there were some things there um, that left us with a big void. And then we had younger players that still are in developmental stage, you know, through the spring. So now we got to see after this summer where it's going, okay? And um, I think, um, you know, I sure hope I have better answers for you where it's rolling in about, you know, after 10 practices. One more thing I'm going to follow up on real quick. Okay. Uh, Nick Martinez, Jordan Medley, and Malik Johnson. Yeah, not, 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 yes, they're, they're no longer they've in the, left the program. Yeah, yeah. and uh, are still at school here. Still in school. Yeah. 